over a century, a tradition of intercollegiate athletic excellence has been strong in central Nebraska. This is an inside look at that tradition. This is the University of Nebraska Kearney Loper Review. Loper Review is brought to you by Nebraska Star Beat, from our family to yours. Hello and welcome to another edition of Loper Review. I'm your host, Randy Bushcutter, for an in-depth look behind the scenes of UNK Loper Athletics. Not only will we shake off the cold this month in our special edition, but we'll also warm your heart for the holiday season with a special look at John McBride on how John is continuing his battle with Parkinson's disease. In our senior spotlight, we'll visit with a basketball player who's the last of four siblings to make significant contributions to Loper Athletics. And in MIAA 101, Professor Kelsey will take a look back at the highs and lows of the conference fall sports season. So stay with us as we take a Christmas break look at Loper Athletics right here on Loper Review. Loper Review is brought to you by Nebraska Star Beef. The Nebraska Star Beef Pure Promise. No antibiotics, no hormones, humane treatment of animals, USDA choice or higher, a price that is always fair, and satisfaction guaranteed. At Nebraska Star Beef, we pay close attention to what we feed our families and are passionate about delivering beef that you can feel good about serving to your family. Visit us at NebraskaStarBeef.com for more information. Programming is made possible in part by the Museum of Nebraska Art in Kearney. From the artist explores, through the modern era, to the art of today. Mona tells the story of Nebraska through the art of Nebraska. Whether you're online at mona.unk.edu or on our doorstep, there's always something new to see and do. You're watching the Nebraska Star Beef Loper Review. Welcome back. In past episodes of Loper Review, we've talked about John McBride's decision to step down as UNK's athletic director to focus on his battle with Parkinson's disease. Well, this month, we are pleased to partner up with the UNK Department of Community Relations and Communications for a great profile of how John is battling this disease. You know, my, wife, my wife's from Nebraska and we spent a lot of time out here with our family on vacation trips and I grew to like the area, like the people and, and when I had a chance to interview for the job, uh, it, it looked like just the right fit for me. Uh, I was able to get to know people. They wanted to know, you know, about, about you at the same time so it was a, it was a caring community. I, I think a lot of the self-satisfaction, at least for me, to be an athletic director is seeing the success of the student athletes and just all the award winners, the, the people competing for national championships, uh, getting their degrees, uh, winning the special academic awards, seeing them have success it drives me. Started out with a simple tremor in my hand, yeah, right arm and started having anxiety attacks when I was in public speaking settings, which for me had become you know, easy things over the years and pretty common. But I started having anxiety attacks and couldn't catch my breath and, uh, when I was in public settings. Uh, so something wasn't quite right. So I went and talked to the doctor and um, he wanted me to get to a neurologist and have a, a battery of uh, tests done to make sure that to eliminate some things like strokes and Alzheimer's and, and other possibilities. Uh, one thing that wasn't eliminated was Parkinson's. Parkinson's disease is an illness that has very many causes. It's not just one thing. And it affects the motor system or muscle movement. In some cases we know what the cause is. We know, for instance, there are several genes that by themselves can cause this condition. 
uh, and that there are some things in the environment that we know possibly can cause it. But for the most part, we don't have a real good grip on the causes. It's a learning process, learning process for everybody involved in, the, in it, the doctors included as, as they work through it because it's different with each person that has Parkinson's. That's what I found out. I mean, no two are the same. It's about like a snowflake. Really no one knows where it really comes from. So they're still trying to figure out a lot of that and that's, that's why as much as I can I'd like to educate people about Parkinson's and, and what people are dealing with when they, when they have Parkinson's. Uh, it, it's, a, it's an interesting animal and it definitely changes one's life. We can walk and chew gum, we can walk and talk at the same time, so we put it on automatic pilot. We don't really think about how to get up from a chair, we just do it. These programs we learn within the first year or two of life, it seems like they're wearing out, that the program for these kind of complex movements, imagine if you would, if you had to write the program for rolling over in bed. There has to be at least 50 steps, and if you don't know or how to get going, if those programs don't work, you've got to find out how to take that first step and how to take the second one and how to make a turn and these things are not easy. Uh, they're so easy for us we take it for granted but uh, it's not easy for people with Parkinson's. I've joked a few times with Dr. Batoni in, in Omaha that uh, I'm tired of thinking. Uh, you just constantly have to think about everything you're going to do. You have to re, 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 refigure everything in your brain. And at age 57, that's not the greatest time in life to tell yourself to do all these things. Because staying active at 57 is difficult enough without Parkinson's. And the combination a, is a double whammy. One thing that the doctors and the physical therapists have stressed with me is um, they're, they're trying to help, us, help as much as they can in clearing my mind as much as they can and make me concentrate on things that can be beneficial for me and get rid of things that, that aren't beneficial and the worries in my, in my mind. So that's, that's what led to the decision to step away from the athletic director's position. Uh, dealing with people that are very close to you is, is a, it was, it was the most incredibly difficult decision, discussion that I've ever had uh, to deal with. And be, besides family, um, those are as close as people have been you know, to me. And it was, uh, yeah, it was real tough. Uh, because I'm not real good about not finishing something. It, that, that drives me crazy. So to, be, to have to step away before I'm ready to step away is, is an incredibly difficult decision. To admit you can't do some things is that's challenging and can get you down a little bit. But the, you just have to stay positive, uh, you know, stay focused. If you have people reminding you of that, maybe it's your wife, maybe it's your son or your daughter, or maybe it's a physical therapist that keeps nudging you along. You can do it. I can be positive, but I need positive people around me too. Like any time we have an illness and we get a diagnosis, it is such a change. And there's a lot of fear, of course, but the challenges are acceptance and a certain willpower that you're not going to let. You may have this illness, but you're not going to let the illness have you. I guess there's two ways to go. I'm, I'm a glass is half full person. And uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue that uh, process. I'm, I'm gonna fight it. Well, as John said, leaving a job that he loves so thoroughly was very difficult. But the positive aspect is the ability to move on. That part of the story is coming up next on Loper Review. Loper Review is brought to you by Nebraska Star Beef. The Nebraska Star Beef Pure Promise. No antibiotics. No hormones, humane treatment of animals, USDA choice or higher, a price that is always fair, and satisfaction guaranteed. At Nebraska Star Beef, we pay close attention to what we feed our families and are passionate about delivering beef that you can feel good about serving to your family. Visit us at NebraskaStarBeef.com for more information.
programming is made possible in part by the Museum of Nebraska Art in Kearney. From the artist explores, through the modern era, to the art of today, Mona tells the story of Nebraska through the art of Nebraska. Whether you're online at mona.unk.edu or on our doorstep, there's always something new to see and do. You're watching the Nebraska Star Beef Loper Review. Welcome back to Loper Review. We continue our look at John McBride's courageous struggle against Parkinson's disease as we take a look at his struggles both emotionally and physically. When they talk to you about it, you know, they, there's not a cure for it, so you, you know what you're dealing with the rest of your life, and that's what you have to, as in a mindset, you have to prepare yourself for the fight the rest of your life. Um, I'm, I'm going to have to do PT, I'm going to have to do stretching, I'm going to have to continue to do, do that or I'll lose those uh, capabilities if I don't take care of it, if I don't fight, fight the fight. The number one key to success for John, um, and we see this across the board with all of our patients, but it's really been a, uh, a testament to who he is uh, and, and his spirit, is his drive. His attitude towards this whole thing has lined up really, really lockstep with us, which is let's push, let's see what we can achieve, let's, let's push for that next step, let's push for that next uh, thing to be able to attain. That shows a lot of character, that shows a lot of determination uh, to really push through beyond what a diagnosis tells you. I wish we could clone his attitude because a lot of people want to retreat and they're afraid of so many things, but he's courageous and and more power to them. Uh, you know, that's the kind of thing that we need to show people that you can fight this and you're not all alone in fighting it. I think that's why I was interested in helping with the educational aspect of the Parkinson's group in Nebraska and getting the word out to people, and getting support groups started and those type of things. Just just knowing that someone cares about it and wants to understand that they've, they've helped out and they've had, they ask you what what they can do for you, that, that means a lot. The, the support people, the, 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 the medical people, the, the people that have Parkinson's, as much as they can share about their cases with people and how they best effectively handle those ca cases, the better off everybody is in the process until you get in that situation. I think um, you don't recognize that. People need to understand that this is a common condition. In this area, maybe somewhere between three and five percent of men will have a chance lifelong, that is if they live long enough, to have Parkinson's disease. It is too common and anytime anyone suffers from this disease, um, it is not a good thing. We should try to eliminate the illness and there are research uh, programs that are looking to do that, but we need to know so much more. As they keep working on Parkinson's, maybe they do find that, that right drug. Maybe the medication will do it. Maybe the exercise will be the, the common element in, in, in all of it, too. If, if I can help along the way in, in letting, a, letting a doctor find certain combinations of medicine and physical therapy that work, then and, and so be it. You know, play my small role and it helps somebody who's down the road. Uh, that you know, that's one of my that's one of my personal goals. Whatever you know, thing I can do to help moving, moving forward, you know, I think that's important at this point. And if this can, if I can help, if I can help somebody get better in the situation and better understand Parkinson's and know how to deal with it, then then I I feel I feel successful in, in what I've done with it. We need more people with the uh, same attitude John McBride has. He's a fighter, and he's going to fight this, and we're going to be there with him. We want to say thanks to Stephanie Galloway, Sarah Gibney, and Todd Gatula from the UNK Department of Community Relations and Communications for their help putting together that story on John McBride, who continues to be an inspiration for everyone who knows him. Best of luck to you, John. It's time for us to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll shine our senior spotlight on Kendall Glidden from the UNK men's basketball team. His story of determination is coming up next on Loper Review. You're watching the Nebraska Star Beef Loper Review. The Nebraska Star Beef Pure Promise. No antibiotics, no hormones, humane treatment of animals. 
USDA choice or higher. A price that is always fair and satisfaction guaranteed. At Nebraska Star Beef, we pay close attention to what we feed our families and are passionate about delivering beef that you can feel good about serving to your family. Visit us at NebraskaStarBeef.com for more information. Programming is made possible in part by the Museum of Nebraska Art in Kearney. From the artist explores, through the modern era, to the art of today. Mona tells the story of Nebraska through the art of Nebraska. Whether you're online at mona.unk.edu or on our doorstep, there's always something new to see and do. Loper Review is brought to you by Nebraska Star Beef. Welcome back to Loper Review. Time now to shine our senior spotlight on Kendall Glidden from the men's basketball team. Kendall, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Kendall, give us a little bit of your background. I know you grew up in Bickleman. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, um, it's a small town, so um, a lot of people in the town, didn't, you know, some of the kids growing up were like, oh, I wish I had a bigger town to grow, grow up in, but I really enjoyed it. Um, it really... Um, our family's a big outdoors family, so being in a small town uh, really helped with that. And also, um, it helped us kids. We played outside all the time and played sports pretty much all the time, so that really helped my, get my base of, I guess, sports and athletics to help me um, to where I am today, actually. Mm -hmm. um, you Sports, you mentioned, kind of a big part of your life. You have some sisters that were very, very athletic, uh, both lettered in volleyball. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, they both came here. Um, my oldest one, Sarah, she went to a junior college first, and then she came here. And then Allison joined her a couple years later. And um, I came down to a few of those games and stuff. But, yeah, they both came here and lettered, so they were both very successful here. And, and your older brother was on the uh, track team as well. Yep, he just graduated last year, so he was on the track team for four, five years, I guess. And he lettered and did very well by the end of his career here, too. As, as you were growing up, you know, you had older brothers and sisters that were athletes here at UNK. Did you have an opportunity to uh, see them compete here in Kearney? And did that kind of lead you to becoming a loper? Yeah, um, I didn't get to see my brother as much because I, um, senior year and junior year, and I was a lot more busy, so I didn't get to come down. But when I was younger, I came down to watch my sisters a lot. And so being younger, it helped me um, see them in the big spotlight and with a bunch more fans. And it just, you know, looked like something I wanted to do and made me want to work harder to be here as well. I've always loved basketball, I guess. I've grown up out in the front yard shooting all the time and stuff, and so I guess I, I didn't really even have to make a choice. I just consciously, I knew I wanted to do basketball, so I really didn't even think about track or anything else, really. So it isn't so much tr trying to be different. I mean, it's just, that's the sport that called you. Oh, yeah. Good. First few years, you know, whenever you kind of make that, that, that leap up from high school to college, you have, kind of have to pay your dues. First mm -hmm. couple of years, not a lot of playing time. Um, was it difficult during that process to stay positive? Um, it was. I mean, the first year, definitely um, coming out of high school where I started, you know, for the previous three years and played all the time, you know, and, and then coming here and, yeah, it's just a big eye-opener, a different level, you know, everyone's really talented, so it was, it was pretty hard to, to stick with it, I guess. It kind of had my doubts at times, but, but I knew I wanted to stay with it and it would pay off eventually. Happy with the decision? Oh yeah, it was, it's been a, a blast for the last four years. Now that you've kind of looked back at it, you know, and you've got to have to pay your dues and, and fight your way through that, are you really kind of glad that you kind of stuck with it, or is there that little tinge that maybe I could have done something else? Um, I'm pretty glad I stuck with it. It's definitely taught me time management skills, especially as I've gotten here to my senior year now, and classes have been getting harder and stuff. Um, I think that's going to, it's definitely going to help me in life to where I'm going to have to manage manage time with anything I do, with my job, with anything. So I think sports, this, I mean, basketball especially, it's, it goes long and miss quite a few days of school, so it definitely teaches me good time management skills, which I'll use forever. 
I know as soon as we get done here, you're heading off to a lab. Uh, in fact, we better get going with that. <laughs> but uh, I know as soon as we get done here, you're heading to a lab. So give me an idea of what, what it is that you're studying. What do you plan to do in the future? Uh, my, my major is exercise science, and I have a minor in health, health sciences. Um, I'm looking to go and be a chiropractor. I'm going to go to grad school probably in Iowa um, next year, hopefully July, maybe November. But, um, yeah, I'm looking to go there for grad school for chiropractic. Good for you. Um, when you look back on your time here at UNK, what are some things that are really going to stand out for you? What are going to be those memories you take with you down the road? Well, I guess as one thing as my coach always says, one thing you got to take away from being in any kind of sport is the relationships you have with your team and stuff, which um, I guess looking back, road trips and stuff like that with all my buddies and stuff, and I think this year is going to be even better because we have a really good good bunch of guys around so I think as this year um, continues on I think I'm gonna make a lot more memories and especially being my senior year I'll I'll remember them a lot longer so I'm looking forward to this year and remembering all the road trips and having times with the guys. <laughs> hey Kendall really appreciate time best luck to you in the lab and everything. Yep thanks for having me. All right time for us to take a quick break when we come back while he heads to see his professor we'll sit down with Professor Kelsey right after this on Loper Review. You're watching the Nebraska Star Beef Loper Review. The Nebraska Star Beef Pure Promise. No antibiotics, no hormones, humane treatment of animals, USDA choice or higher, a price that is always fair, and satisfaction guaranteed. At Nebraska Star Beef, we pay close attention to what we feed our families and are passionate about delivering beef that you can feel good about serving to your family. Visit us at NebraskaStarBeef.com for more information. Programming is made possible in part by the Museum of Nebraska Art in Kearney. From the artist explores, through the modern era, to the art of today, Mona tells the story of Nebraska through the art of Nebraska. Whether you're online at mona.unk.edu or on our doorstep, there's always something new to see and do. You're watching the Nebraska Star Beef Loper Review. Welcome back. Time now for MIAA 101. Now, not only is this the last MIAA 101 for the semester, but it'll be our last one ever because next semester we'll be moving on to Loper History 101. Right now, Professor Kelsey takes a look at the 2013 fall sports season in the conference. The fall season once again showed us how competitive the MIAA is in all sports. It also showed us how the Lopers are holding their own against the rest of the conference. The volleyball team led the way for the Lopers once again, and although they did not match their regular season and conference tournament championships from a year ago, they were in the race for the regular season title going into the final weekend, and then took regular season champion Missouri Central to five sets in the championship of the MIAA tournament. A week later, the Lopers and the Jennies would go five sets again in the first round of the regional tournament with Central coming out on top. Central would lose to eventual national champion Concordia St. Paul in the semifinals. Loper senior Katie Sokolowski was a first team choice for both the all-conference and all-regional teams. She also had the highest GPA of the nine Lopers who were on the conference all-academic team with a 3.76 in psychology. Sophomore MJ Massenet was also a first team all-conference choice with senior Ashley Leitner and sophomore setter Aaron Seeley on the second team. Senior Ellie Pesavento and junior Liz McGowan were on the third team. Pesavento earned all-conference honors all four years as a loper. The soccer team took their game to a higher level in the second season with John Maisner as coach, finishing fifth in their final regular season standings and qualifying for the conference tournament for the first time. In the tournament's first round, they lost to Washburn in an overtime shootout. 
The Lopers had five players who were named both MIAA All-Conference and All-Academic. Senior twin sisters from Colorado, Becca and Sarah Talcott were third-team All-Conference with honorable mention honors going to senior Missy Everson, sophomore Breezy Yonke, and sophomore Montana Hosterman. A total of 14 Lopers were on the All-Academic list. Southwest Baptist would win the conference tournament after Central Missouri had won the regular season title. And for the record, even though UNK doesn't have a men's soccer team, Lindenwood won both the regular season title and the conference tournament. Football wasn't able to improve on their conference record thanks mainly to another year during which injuries created a revolving door situation at quarterback and other key injuries took their toll on the Lopers. The football team finished 3-6 in the conference and 3-8 and overall, taking ninth place in the conference. After the Lopers finished playing their first four conference opponents, those four teams were still all undefeated and ranked in the national top 20 of Division II. Of those four, Northwest Missouri would go on to win the conference championship with an undefeated season. The day before we recorded this segment of MIAA 101, the Bearcats advanced to the Division II national championship game. UNK junior offensive lineman Cole Manhart was the only unanimous choice for all-conference this season, and he was also named to the all-region team. Five other Lopers were honorable mention, senior Kellen Warner, senior Yada Kyles, senior Jason Wilcox, junior Pete Troush, and freshman Tyke Kozal. Manhart and Kozal were also among the 20 Lopers who were named to the MIAA all-academic team. The cross-country teams both had solid seasons as the men qualified for nationals for the first time in 14 years, even though they had several individuals qualify over that time span. The Loper men finished fourth at both the MIAA meet and at regionals. Kevin Carter earned all MIAA honors with a fourth place finish at the conference meet. Central Missouri was the men's conference champion. Liz Damon also earned all conference honors with a 10th place finish at the conference meet leading a balanced Loper showing that resulted in a runner-up finish for UNK and team race with Southwest Baptist coming in first. At regionals, the Lopers finished seventh, one spot short of qualifying for nationals. So now you're up to speed on who's hot and who's not in the MIAA so far this year. That will wrap up MIAA 101 as you know it. And starting next semester, I'll be back with a monthly review of Loper history starting from the beginning. See you then. Thanks, Professor. And by the way, next semester when we have Loper History 101, Professor Kelsey again will be our professor. Well, it's time for us to wrap up things for this semester, and we'll be back again next year. In fact, we won't be back until February because of the long Christmas holiday break. We hope you enjoy your holidays. Thanks for joining us. See ya, and go Lopers. You're watching the Nebraska Star Beef Loper Review. The Nebraska Star Beef Pure Promise. No antibiotics, no hormones, humane treatment of animals, USDA choice or higher, a price that is always fair, and satisfaction guaranteed. At Nebraska Star Beef, we pay close attention to what we feed our families and are passionate about delivering beef that you can feel good about serving to your family. Visit us at NebraskaStarBeef.com for more information.